Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. I want to let you know which lessons have become available on my YouTube channel this last week. Last week's lessons have included Grade 2, pages 19 to 20, which continues to look at the topic of grouping notes and rests. Grade 3 now includes pages 9 and 10, which also includes the topic of grouping notes and rests. And so you can see how important a topic this is. You know, it just keeps recurring the more time signatures and complex rhythms that we have to deal with as we progress through the grades. Grade 5 lessons now include pages 76 to 79, where we'll look at different exercises of music in context. And here we get to draw together everything that we've learned so far and we relate that to a piece of music and we answer questions regarding this little extract of music and it calls into question all of the things that we've studied so far. And do remember that the grades are accumulative and so this will call into question all of the material that you've learned right back from grade one, two, three, four and five. Anything from any of those grades can be called into question and so these are a really great revision exercise. I work through every lesson with you step by step helping you with every little subject detail along the way. Do remember that all of the lessons for the grade 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 Discovering Music Theory workbooks from ABRSM syllabus are all available advert free on my Patreon channel. So if you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill you'll find every single thing that you need to know for all of the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. At the end of this little video you'll see some sample lessons and so you can see how I guide you through each exercise step by step just as if I was sitting right next to you. Grab your pencils and let's get studying. And so we can see here in exercise one, we have four crotchet beats per bar. So there is a crotchet, of course, there's one crotchet beat. There's a crotchet beat. There's a crotchet beat. There's a crotchet beat. There is the halfway mark that we don't beam over. And we can see that they can be joined together. And now it's much easier to read one, two, three, four crotchet beats per bar. So here we have three quavers per bar. And at first glance, this seems correct because there's one quaver beat. But then here's a quaver beat and another quaver beat beam together. So why would we have one and then two quaver beats? And in actual fact, if you remember, the rule is we could actually beam all of these together. So what we would get is if we beam all of those together, semi-quavers, quaver semi-quavers. They could go all together like that. We can just put everything together. This is the one exception and three quaver beats per bar. So that's incorrect. And so only one of these options is correct. Let's look at them all in turn. We should have three crotchet beats and we need to see each crotchet beat. And so here we have, let's just divide this up. So here we have a quaver, which is half of a crotchet beat. And then half of that is a quarter of a beat. And so we have a quarter of a beat left, which would be filled by these two demi-semi quavers. So that is beat one. And so that beam should not continue and we know that four semiquavers equals a crotchet, they should be beamed separately, so that's not correct. Now here again, we've got that break showing the semiquavers, but they should be beamed together to show beat one. And so this is the only correct answer. There's beat one, there's beat two, there's beat three. So perhaps now you can try. Then we get the opportunity to do this for ourselves from a piece of music that we ourselves know. So it says to find a piece of music that you know with a 3-4 time signature and then change it to twice the value. They've done the thinking for us here actually because here we've gone from 3 crotchet beats to bar per bar and then we've got 3 
million bits per bar, so everything's going to double. So I'm going to uh, reach back and I'm going to go back to the Haydn Piano Sonata that I referred to in a previous lesson. And I'm just going to look at this first bar. We're in three crochet beats per bar. There is an anacrusis, an upbeat, and so I'm going to just start at bar one. When you're counting music, that's always counted as bar one. This is not counted as the first bar. You always count from the first complete bar. So here, I've got three, four, so I'm going to change it to three, two. And so I'm going to have to change that from quaver note, quaver rest, to crotchet note crotchet rest but first of all let's get all the other bits and bobs in place we're in E flat major so we need a key signature of B flats E flats A flats otherwise the music won't sound the same it's got to be exactly the same in musical effect so I'm just going to get the blobs in place first of all so if I just pop this here for comparison so I need a crotchet B I'm not going to worry about the stems just yet then that's going to double up to a crotchet. And then this will have to double up to a minimum. This is really confusing when you're so used to playing a piece of music in a certain time signature. <laughs> and then these will have to become quavers, won't they? So, um, quaver, 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 quaver. And so this will be a crotchet on its own. There's beat one, there's beat two, and then I can beam all of these together to show beat three. <clears throat> Just need a bar line. So that's uh, rewritten a little bit of Haydn in a different time signature. I'm sure he won't mind so long as I do it properly. <clears throat> there we go. And now this is the D below that, however, we need an octave above, don't we? So we need the octave above, above middle C, so we need to be on the D up here. So not this D, but this D here. So actually, if we think about it, we've got the D above middle C and the D, so we are actually one, two octaves out here. Let's look at this here. So if that's middle C, see there's the D below middle C. We need it to be not the D above middle C, but the D above that, an octave above that. So again, this is two octaves out. Let's see what we've got in the bass clef. So we only need one octave lower. So if this is the D above middle C, one octave above would give us what we have here and we need one octave lower which is this one here we're just above middle C and so one octave lower would be this D here that's what we're after the D above middle C and so actually only C is correct and now we have to say whether these statements are true or false so on page 79 Exercise 2b, we are asked, is it true or false that the music should be played slowly? So let's refer to the extract. And so here's our clue, lent, just like lento. So we have this, which tells us that yes, indeed, this is slow. So that's correct. So a bit of revision on our terms there. 